Today I'm going to talk about music memory. In other words, memorizing music. Today I'm going to explain how to improve this, how to make it faster and better music memory, memorizing music. What is music memory? Obviously, it's memorizing music, playing music without the printed sheets in front of you, putting it to memory. Now, there are different types of ways to memorize music. One of the most common and one you'll usually learn first, it would uh, commonly return, referred to as rote memory, repeating over and over, sometimes called muscle memory, especially for pianists, the muscle memory just kind of go automatically. This is done by repeating phrases or repeating songs over and over and over and over. It can take a lot of time, especially if it's a concerto or something, and over and over and over. And it has to be, especially, it, it can be innervating because you, you can forget easily. Your music, your memory can change with music. Your muscle memory can change with the temperature or with when you get an audience in front of you. you can all change. It's not the best way to learn music, to memorize music. Now, of course, I learned this way when I started a, a marching band. I had to learn the parts, memorize the parts, and the drum and bugle corps also, even <laughs> very basic rotary and valve. I had to <laughs> learn rote. It was difficult, rote memory. And that, that's how we learned. And then I learned, of course, in my private lessons, had to practice the scales and the exercises over and over, eventually not leaning to music to see him that was committed to rote memory, always playing them the same, always the same way. But really, that's not good. When I started studying jazz, uh, I had to learn melodies. And it was stressed that you need to know the melody. You have to have it memorized. So, I would start doing this and, and by rote, and I would always have trouble on the longer forms, like the A, A, B, A. I could never remember the B. I always messed up the B side. I couldn't remember where it goes or what. I, it was difficult for me. Uh, so, I had a difficult time. You know, I went to Eastman School of Music Summer School for high school students, and they really stressed this. Uh, when I got to the tune like Disafinado, forget about it. No way I could remember that. No way. So, when I went to college, you know, this continued. You know, I had to learn scale patterns. About I started classical and jazz. And I also studied conducting. Had a conducting class. Had to conduct for my final exam. I had to conduct in front of the University Orchestra, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Da 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 da! Da 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 da! I practiced and I practiced and I looked at the score and circled all the, put the, the cues where I had to cue this instrument in, this is well, the, the process of uh, learning to conduct in front of an orchestra. Not an easy, not an easy thing to learn. But, I would practice. I have a rec recording of Beethoven's Fifth. I would practice with the recording. And then, but I didn't always have the music. I didn't always have the recording. So I would just look at the score. And I start practicing. And I noticed something. Something very strange I never noticed before. I could hear the whole symphony orchestra in my head. Note for note. Everything was entered my head. Music. I could sing. I could play it. I could hear it. Wow. This was like a light going on. So when I went to my final exam, I got an A, of course. That's all I had to concentrate on. Didn't have to concentrate on the notes and the score. Just the cues. When to cue people in. That's it. I knew them. I could knew the music backwards and forwards. But it wasn't rote. At that point, rote memory was gone. It was oral memory. I remember the sound of the orchestra in my head. So... That's one of the keys to learning songs fast. And I had to learn, 
as after college and I played in many many different groups and jazz groups and especially when I went to work on cruise ships we had to, to request all the time on our dance set you know this song you know this song and and the band leader later I was the band leader would would pull out of his vast library and put on our stance when playing this song next never no one ever played it before so we had to learn fast okay trumpet you play the a section trombone b section saxophone take the solo and then i'm going out trombone take the a section trumpet take the b section and saxophone take the repeat of the a section <laughs> boom like that I had to learn fast. So what's the result? I learned a lot of tunes. This is my real book. Check this out. Got my IUP on there. I went to university. That's a lot of tunes. I know them all. But I don't know every song there is. I played with a guy who did know every song there is. His name was Jules Levan. I played in the Derby Lane Big Band. Uh, big Band in... Uh, Tampa and St. Petersburg, Florida on the Derby Lane dog track. For three years I played with them. We had a piano player named Jules Levant who was in his mid-80s. He was so old that he had <coughs> got his start playing professionally in speakeasies. Speakeasies were during Prohibition that were private clubs during Prohibition to serve liquor. And he would play. He was only like 18 years old and he was playing in speakeasies. So he's been played with everybody. He's been played all over the country. All with I've met, met many musicians. Oh yeah, I know Jules Levan. <laughs> I played with him at the Still Pier in in, in Atlantic City. <laughs> oh my God. He, 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 but here's the thing: in between uh, ship contracts and 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 when I was back in Tampa, I would play some small group things in a small group. Uh, 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 gigs, and I would need a certain tune. And I, if I didn't have it in my giant real book, I would say, "Hey, Jules, do you know this tune?" And he would say, "Yeah, I know this tune. Give me a piece. Give me a manuscript paper." And he would to the piano and write it down. Doom, like that. And we used to we used to prank him. We used to come up. Let's let's find some really obscure song that there's no way he's gonna know it. So we would find, say, me the music for it or something. Okay, so we knew what the song was. And we say, Jules, do you know this song? And he said, oh, yeah, I know it. He would sit down and play. We never stumped him. Never could stump him. How did he do that? <laughs> well, I'm going to try and help you do that. But first, I need you to do something. For me, I need you to click that subscribe button and like button so I know continue doing what I'm doing so I can continue doing what I'm doing okay so the secret is one of the secrets is oral hearing it in your head you got to hear it in your head then play it and I've, I have other videos on improvisation where I talk about orally instead of looking at the music and then saying oh it's a g7 I have to play this arpeggio no it has to be in your head when you, you go directly from your ear, you hear an, another player, you communicate with the other musicians, and you use that music in your improvisation solos because you can. And music memory is important for this. So now I'm going to give you some exercises that I, I talk about on other very simple exercises to do. You can try licks, like I said, try licks with your other players, other musicians. It's one way. Sing everything you play. Sing it before you play. All your exercises, even your etudes, everything. Sing them, then play them. Even my university trombone teacher, Dr. Richard Thorell, made me do this. And he was a classical guy. He didn't play jazz. When he had something jazzy, he would come to me and say, how do I play this jazz? How do I play this multiphonic stuff? Because <laughs> I was studying Albert Mangelsdorf at the time. Multiphonics, he would come to me and ask me. But he insisted also because he was an Emory Remington student from Eastman School of Music, and that's what Emory Remington taught singing everything 
and playing everything. So, that's another one exercise you can do. Get the oral method. In oral, you have to have that first before you can do anything else. Another thing a lot of players do when they want to study jazz and their university jazz professors say, go out and buy some transcriptions and play them. Wrong! Don't ever do that. Don't play anybody else's transcriptions. Never, 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 never. Do it yourself. The way to learn jazz styles and jazz licks and learn to play them is to transcribe yourself. I learned this before there were books with transcriptions. The only books with transcriptions they had were, for example, I could buy a book on Chicago, the band Chicago, I still have it, and Blood and Sweat and Tears to my favorite bands because I wanted to have their music and the, the Brecker Brothers. But there was no J.J. Johnson or even Charlie Parker trans, very few, maybe in Downbeat once in a while they would put a transcription in. I remember I had one, it's called Bongo Bop. I can never play it. <laughs> but anyway, one day I went to the record store and there's this album, funny looking album with a trombone player with long hair like this, lean, leaning, it's a color, cartoonish, in a, in a, in a, look like a wildlife in a, in a, in a, in a, in a jungle. And the title of the album was Bill Watrous in the Manhattan Wildlife Refuge. I said, what the heck is this? So I bought it. I put it on. I was amazed. The, 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 the ability of Bill Watrous to play the, the, quality of the big band of my god i said oh my god i want to play like him <laughs> now this is a 16 year old kid after i went to eastman I said transcribe so what did i do i started transcribing the whole album fourth floor walk up was the most difficult one i did that transcription when i was in high school it was really hard <laughs> i would listen do a lick, try to play it, figure out the notes, write it down. Go to the next lick, write it down. And then, when I was done, I wasn't done finished, another album came out called The Tiger of San Pedro, <clears throat> The Manhattan Wildlife Refuge. I said, oh my God, here's another album I'm going to have to transcribe. And I transcribed that one also. Later I transcribed, when I was in college, I just remember Albert Mangelsdorf, I transcribed many, many, many different souls. That's my point. Do it yourself. Never practice a transcribed other person transcribed it. Never do that. Never, never, never. Another thing you can do when you have those licks, when you've transcribed them, don't just play them in that same key. Do not write them down in different keys. Learn the lick and then play it in different keys. Play it like here in different keys. So it's um do da 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 do da 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 and then play it in different da 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 go around the circle of fifths, play in each key. It's another thing to improve your music memory. Okay, now on the tunes. How do I memorize the songs? Okay, open your oh god, I can barely lift this up. Open your real book. I'm just gonna pull something out of here. Here's a good one. I just pulled this out. Night and day. I don't know if you can see this. Night and day in G. <laughs> Night and day, you are the one. Oh, great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful standard tune. One of my favorites. First thing you do, look at the melody, obviously. You want to when we're sitting there on the bandstand and someone's taking a solo on another tune and they, the band says, oh, we got a, re a request for night and day. We're going to do it in G. Because I'm going he's going to sing it or whatever. So, I have this sheet in front of me. I look at it while the other guy's playing. Night and day. Night and day. These sections. 
So it's A. So the first thing you do, read it through, sing it in your head. Next thing to do, look at the form. What form is it? Okay. And then there's a B section. And you figure it out, the form. A, A, B, A, B, A. More or less, it's A, B, A form. So then, what do you do? Okay, they're still playing along. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look at the, the melody. Da 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 da. Okay, then it repeats. Da 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 with a little bit of analyze the melody. Two bar phrases, sometimes four bar phrases to bend. This one's four bar phrases. And then it repeats the first four bar phrase with a different melody. Da 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 da. And then it goes down. Da 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 da. It goes down chromatic. Da 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 da. Da da da, night and day. Then goes to the B section. Okay, da da da, and we're going da 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 da. Same type of rhythm, but in a, in a different uh, key center, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Analyze the melody. This was without playing it. Don't play it yet. Don't play it. Then. Look at the key changes, where the two five ones are, where the two, it starts with the two five one, A minor seven D seven G G major seven. Two five one. Not it's not A minor seven D seven G major seven, it's two five one in G. Now, if you want to play it in F, then you know exactly what else is two five one in F or C or whatever key. Learn the 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 practical harmony of the song. Look at the general, it don't have to be specific because you just need to get the sound in your head because especially when you get more advanced playing with more advanced players they're not going to always play those chord changes especially the real book changes are, are mostly crap so they're going to reharmonize it just listen to bill evans or keith jarrett reharmonizing everything they don't play the same harmony chick korea never played the same thing twice i'm studying this song spain by chick korea project I'm working on called Bonafide Chick. I'm going to play my favorite Chick Corea songs. Spain, Amanda's Rumba, etc, etc, La Fiesta, uh, children's song number one. And I listen a lot to Spain because Spain is, is pretty difficult, uh, difficult to play on trombone. And I listen a lot to the different recordings live, especially live recordings of Chick Corea. He, he never played it the same twice. Depending on who he's playing with, there's always he played with Bobby McFerrin. Even the two times I heard listen to Bobby McFerrin were totally different. Both Bobby and him. Totally different. Totally different than, than the lead sheet from from the real book. Don't rely on the lead sheet. Lead sheet is just a guide. The real book lead sheets are a guide. You piano players, you there's lots of videos on there how to reharmonize. So that's the key. Then, once you've done all that, you play it, and you never forget it. It's memorized. That fast. Not by rote, by intellect, by oral, and by analytical memory. Those things are much easier to remember than muscle memory. Muscle memory is fault. You don't want to do that. So, in conclusion, Memorizing this way will obviously make you a better improviser, a better musician. Classical music is the same way. If you watch these many, many videos on, on, on memorizing music, almost all of them are piano players because they have to memorize these concertos. And they basically just repeated exactly what I said, exactly what this video says. You will learn the right hand. You analyze the, 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 by, by section and, the, the, and, and learn, say, one page of the right hand, and then you learn the left hand. You analyze the, 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 the melody, how it, how it goes, and, then, and that's how you learn it, not by muscle, muscle memory. When you learn this way, for example, you go and you say, well, I don't like the interpretation of this section. I'm going to change it. Then you can change it. 
just like a jazz improvisation. You don't always want to play the melody the same way I like to be able like night and day. You don't always play it. Da 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 Boring. Listen to Louis Armstrong. Did Louis Armstrong do that? Hell no. Okay, that's jazz. So, get to work.